All right, so this first hack is going to help you write better midis for your melodies. So let's jump right in. All right, so we're going to start by writing out the bass notes first. That's going to help us get the rhythm for this melody. Great, so we got some bass notes now, so let's go ahead and start building out the chords. Now, if you don't know, in Ableton, you can go ahead and click the scale right up here, and you can go ahead and pick exactly what scale you want to show. So if you don't have any music theory knowledge, no worries. All right, so we're gonna be using D sharp major because that's what lines up with our bass notes. Now, technically, you could just pick out the scale first right away, but me, I like to pick out these bass notes so I can get it sounding nice. All right, so let's go ahead and start building out some triads. Now, triads are gonna be using a note and then skipping every other one that is highlighted or in the scale, right? So for instance, this one's in the scale, this one is, and this one is. And this, if we skip one and go up to the A sharp, that is going to build out the triad. And then all we have to do is do it one more time. Boom. And that is our first triad. Now you can also use sevenths, which are basically triads with another layer on top. And it's going to make the chord sound fuller. Let's try that out. Another great hack for making chords is you can use the plus five, minus five, or plus seven. And what that's going to do is how many notes are going up or down, right? So if we go up five notes, one, two, three, four, five, we know that this chord is going to be in our scale and it's probably going to sound good too. Let's take a listen. So it does sound good. Now, like I said, you can also do a minus five or a minus seven. So let's try those out too to see which one we like better. All right, so the minus seven sounded the best. And we're going to go ahead and mess with these chords at the end, but let's go ahead and get our last one in here. All right, so what we did is we copied this over, and now let's take a look at inverting the chords. So inverting the chords is using different octaves with each of these notes, right? All right, so I played around with the notes a little bit more, and this is what we have now. So pretty good. Let's go ahead and copy this over now. All right, and what you could do to even make it easier for yourself is click this little scale button right here, and it's going to limit it to just the notes that are in your scale that's already highlighted. So you have some choices from here. Either you can go ahead and put some top notes in here and give it a little more flair, or you could just leave it how it is and kind of move on to some more layered melodies. Let's go ahead and mix this up a little bit more. Let's go ahead and add a couple top notes really quick as well. And also what you can do is you can add in a note and you can offset it just a little bit and it's going to give it that bring sort of a sound. And there you go. You have more of a complex sort of a top line for the piano. Now the only thing I would do from here is change it up just a little bit on this second half. So what you could do from here is copy it over to make it eight bars and then change up little things here or there to make it more interesting as well. But let's go ahead and talk about a couple more hacks. So let's say you just spent a bunch of time making a melody and you just absolutely don't like it. Well, instead of throwing it all the way and trying again, there's a couple things you can do instead. The first thing you could try out is selecting everything and then pitching it up or down a couple notes and seeing if it sounds any better from there. You also have a couple other options here. You can play with some of the things on the side here that Ableton has for you, such as reverse, invert, duplicate. You can make it twice as long or half as long by using these, and you can play with it that way and see if you can come up with something interesting. If we go ahead and invert this, it's going to be absolutely crazy, and it's not going to sound right because it put everything that's in the bass note range down here. But what we could do is we could try to pull this up instead. And in our case, it doesn't sound that great because we have a lot going on. But if you have a much simpler melody, sometimes you can get something cool out of this. And if we want to try reversing this, it's not going to actually take the melody and reverse it. It's going to reverse the order of the notes. So let's check this out. So we could actually salvage quite a bit of that if we wanted to go ahead and make something new from there. What you could also do is you can freeze and flatten this completely and then just reverse the audio sample if you wanted to try it that way as well. The other thing you could try is dumping a ton of plugins on it and see if you can come up with any cool concepts. Halftime is a great one to put on here. Let's just try this out right off the bat and see what it sounds like. 
Honestly, that sounds pretty dang dope. We could slap on a Finn Micro here and play with these different effects. Even adding this effect track with the liquid vibe sounds pretty dang cool, to be honest. Also, using plugins like Effectrix or Loop Raider can really get crazy with this stuff. I mean, guys, there's so many options. You should never be throwing away any melodies you make. I mean, just check this out. I came up with this in like two seconds. All right, guys, so that was the first hack, and we just covered, like, maybe 10 hacks inside of one, but this video is going to be jam-packed with stuff, so if you're liking this so far, slap the like button on it for me, and subscribe to the channel if you're new, because we got videos like this coming to you every single week to help you get better in your production career. Now let's get into the next hack, which is humanizing your notes. So a lot of producers like to click in their melodies, kind of like we did with this one, instead of outright playing it on a piano. But the thing is, when you do that, it sounds very robotic and not like a human played it. The first thing you can use is Ableton's Grooves and Groove Pool. So if you go ahead and click this right here, it's going to open up your Groove Pool. And if you want to find grooves for it, we can go ahead and click Grooves over here. And you can see there's a list of all these grooves that are already pre-made for you. And as you can see, you have a lot of options down here, right? You have quantizing, timing, randomization, and velocity. And what this is going to do is give you some randomizing in each of those fields. And then what you can do is once you're happy with how it sounds, you can go into your MIDI, you can click right here on grooves, and you can pick out the one you want it to have. And now that groove is going to be applied to that MIDI. Let's see how this sounds. Let's go ahead and take the groove off now, and we're going to go ahead and play with some more of this stuff on the side here. So let's go ahead and select everything, and we have a couple different ways to play with the velocity. So we have this randomize right here, and the number that you put this on is how much the velocity will be randomized by. So if you want it to have a full range, it could be 0 or it could be 127, you'll put it up there. But usually you just want it to be a little bit, so maybe we'll put like 20 to 30. And then we're going to click randomize. And what you're going to see is all these velocities down here have just been randomized. And it's going to sound more humanistic. Let's check it out. So there's another way that you can do this too. Instead, you could go ahead and select everything. And you could use this velocity range right here. And you may be saying, well, what the heck is the difference? The difference is if you use this. Every single time the MIDI plays, it's going to give it a random velocity in between the value right here that you're seeing. So the randomized one randomizes everything and it's stuck at those values, but this one's going to be random every time the MIDI plays. You could also go ahead and click right over here to the envelopes and play with any of the envelopes in your melodies as well to give them more range of expression. For instance, we could do this pitch blend that's on it by default, or we could go into this whole list of other things that we can modulate. And you can modulate anything from the plugins that are on it as well. But if we wanted to do the pitch bend, for instance, we could go ahead and draw something in, and it's actually going to bend the pitch of the melody. Let's listen to this. Gives it that old detuned effect. You can also then go ahead and click on this next one, which is no expression. And you might not see anything here, but go ahead and look down here towards the bottom. And you can go ahead and toggle on each of these things. So you can see you can put expression with the velocity. You can do some random velocity, some pressure, and some slides if you want to slide in between notes. And what you do is you click on a note here, and then you can go ahead and make it doing it like this. But it's only going to affect each note that you have highlighted at the time that you're doing that. But also, you can use some of the stock Ableton plugins to get some of these humanistic effects too. Let's check them out. So under the MIDI effects, we have a couple different things that we can play with. The first one is the Velocity plugin, which is a way to randomize the velocity. So you can play with how high it's going to cut up versus down. You can play with the drive a little bit to give it a bend in the characteristics. You can apply some comping. You can apply some randomization. Of And then you also have this note length MIDI effect right here, which is dope. And this is going to randomize the length of the MIDI notes that you have and how long they're going to play.
Really quick guys, I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Audio Hacks, and we just created a new members era where we're going to be posting advanced tutorials, drum kits, crack VSTs, and all kinds of dope stuff for producers that you're going to want to get your hands on. Last month we dove deep into boom bap beats and all the members got crazy drum kits, they got advanced tutorials on how to make boom bap beats. They got samples and midis and all kinds of stuff so that they could go ahead and master the art of boom bap. And this month, we're gonna be diving into how you can create your own YouTube channel and brand yourself in a unique way so that you can stand out from the thousands of producers out there in the marketplace. So if you wanna learn a little more about this, go ahead and click the link in the description below and join the party. So that's cool and all, but what if you don't wanna spend a ton of time coming up with a crazy complex melody? Well, there's a super quick way to do that and that's our next hack. So this is the arpeggiator hack. Now, there's a couple ways you can do it. The first way is using Ableton's MIDI plugin called arpeggiator. Let's click on it and see what it's doing. This works way better when you have chords going on because there's multiple notes that it can arpeggiate between. So just know that. So you can actually pick the style of arpeggiator if you want it to go up in note value or down or however you want the characteristic to be. But let's go ahead and just see what it sounds like straight out of the box. So we can obviously play with the rate. And if you want to add steps to it, that's going to add octaves that it can go up and down from those notes. Check this out. You know what really works great with that too is if you have a lot going on, like this is obviously just going too crazy, going ahead and putting a halftime rate on this is going to cool it right down and sound so dope. so much different. The next way is using a plugin that has arpeggiator instruments in it. So a lot of VST instruments are going to have arpeggiator sounds. One of my favorite ones to use is Electra X just because I have so many cool patches and presets for it. But what we want to do with these chords here is you can see I got rid of the top notes and I got rid of the bass notes as well because we don't need that much going on. So with this preset, just using the bottom note works really well, but every single ARP instrument you use is going to be a little bit different. <music> Putting a halftime effect on here, just like in the other example, is going to go crazy. Let's check it out. Yes, sir. This is what I'm talking about right here. It just goes absolutely crazy. And honestly, with this preset, we could just take this bottom note right here and go all the way down with it. Let's see. So how is that for a start to a melody? Good artist copy, great artist steal. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say we find a melody that we like. I like this one, for instance. Awesome. What we can do is we can go ahead and drag this onto a MIDI track with a piano or some sort of an instrument. And we can go ahead and click harmonize here. And it's going to go ahead and copy all the MIDI notes from there and put it into a MIDI clip so that we can go ahead and use it with a different instrument and totally remix that MIDI. All right, so we let that finish. And now this is what we have, a ton of MIDI going on. But let's just play it and see what it sounds like on the piano instrument that we have loaded in. Works pretty damn good if you ask me. You can go crazy with this, right? You could add plugins to this, for example, and change it up completely. You could change the octaves, or you could change what key it's in. You could do all sorts of things, or you could honestly just study it and see how you can improve your MIDI's moving forward. By the way, if you didn't know, there's also this website called MIDIWorld.com, and you can steal the MIDI from some of your favorite songs right here, download it, put it in Ableton and find different instruments and a way to remix it there as well. You can go crazy with this. Don't forget, man, great artists steal. But the problem with most melodies these days is most producers make the same sounding melodies over and over again. So it's really important that you can add your own personality and characteristic into your melodies. And that's the next hack. Let's take a look at how you can do that. If you find some good one-shot kits, you'll see that there's textures and things like that. And these can be used to really change up the sound of it. Let's play around with this a little bit. Yeah, this one sounds pretty cool right here. Let's use this one right here. And you want to make sure that this isn't too loud to where it fucks up your melody. You just want it to be a texture in the background that has a little bit of finesse going on. Let's hear it. It's a little loud for me. Let's turn it down. 
You can also add SFX or FX sounds or crazy sounds like that and add them in as well. Let's add another one in here as well. Once again, we got to turn this way down because we want these just to be little accents in the background. This isn't going to be like an actual part of main instrument of the melody. And to make these fit in better, what you could do is add some reverb or some delays and things. So if they sit in the background and they're not too much in the forefront, that really helps when you're adding textures like that to your melodies. So there you have it, five crazy hacks to make better melodies instantly. But if you're more of a beginner and you still need to learn the fundamentals of making melodies, go ahead and click on this video right here. And it's a live stream, not edited at all, where I go ahead and build a melody in front of you guys so that you can learn every single step along the way. And besides that, guys, always remember that consistency is the biggest catalyst for success. So show up every day with a positive mentality and everything in this world is yours for the taking. Peace out.